Hey y'all, this is Anna Alexander. Welcome to my bedroom on this day when I am presenting to you content I don't normally provide. I don't do these type of commentary, theory, specializing videos. I'm a reaction person reacting to story. This isn't that. So why are we here today? Well, because occasionally something will go along that hits you in the feels so hard mentally, spiritually, physically that if I, <laughs> if I keep the thoughts in my head are going to explode, so I'm either going to talk to the walls for the next week or I'm going to share them all with you. Also, if I don't say them now, next week's intro to the videos is going to be hella long, hella long. So we're just going to do this. We're just going to do this now. So what show are we talking about? It is the series Agatha all along streaming now on Disney+. Plus. What this video is not intended to be is any sort of spoiler talk. I am speaking from a place of only the information we have gotten from the show seven episodes in. Contrary to what might be believed, I like to be surprised. I don't want to know the details ahead of time. If I watch a trailer, I watch the first trailer and that's it. I want to know the premise. I want to know the vibe. And then I can prioritize how much I want to watch whatever it is. I don't want to know the ending up front. My brain as the show will go along will try to put the pieces together and guess where we are going to end up. And it's either going to be three places. Either I'm going to be pleasantly surprised, validated that I was correct, or terribly disappointed. So why this might appear as a spoiler talk video, it's not. I just wanted to share with you how I'm feeling about the show, why I feel about the show, things that have excited me, theories I have, and hopefully, possibly, you all feel the same. Maybe you feel different. I want to know. I'm gonna dive in again. I'm becoming obsessed. So where do we begin? I guess we need to begin at the beginning. Storytelling in general, especially when we're talking about genre, genre fiction, genre movies, Hollywood. Hollywood entertainment, there are rules in the storytelling, in the production. They are there for consumer expectation. Your expectations are met, you're happy, hoop de hoo If you're promised something and it falls flat, you're not happy, bad reviews. But as we all know, the best content is when the rules are broken, but they're broken for a purpose. And you can tell when the rules are broken just because the storytelling was lazy, the editing was lazy, the directing was lazy, and it falls flat. But every once in a while, those rules are broken in ways that are so exciting. You have to sit down and create a video talking about your excitement. And that is what Agatha all along has done for me. And it has happened moment one. Episode one, about three quarters of the way through that episode, I realized that we were going to be taken on a storytelling level that was could potentially be crazy pants. Because episode one of Agatha All Along was not episode one of the series. Essentially, what it was, was a really long end credit scene to WandaVision. Very little, 99% of that episode really was not speaking about the series itself as a whole because it was a different vibe. It was different characters practically. It was different content. The aesthetic was all different because we were in Agnes of Westview. So when I realized, oh, wait a minute, whatever I'm seeing here is not going to be reflected going forward. It was like, oh, okay, interesting. I'm intrigued. Give me more. Episode two is when we had our first chance to really sit with Agatha Harkness as a character. Because even in WandaVision, we didn't meet her officially until those last episodes. And by then, we are firmly with Wanda, Wanda's point of view, Wanda's feelings. Now we have an opportunity to be with Agnes. Agnes. Be with Agatha and her point of views and her feelings. I say with a big question mark. <laughs> Get to that in a moment. And then as we went along with each episode, instead of doing the different television series genres of that decade, we did have a different genres of story. We had the housewives of insert city name. We had the 80s teen overnight camping trip horror vibe. And every episode 
was different. It did have a different aesthetic and vibe and like episode six was so quiet and so somber. Again, each episode different, yet somehow came together to form something that felt cohesive, which is fascinating and so difficult to do. Where also where we, they kind of broke a rule is, who's the protagonist? It should be Agatha. This show's called Agatha all along. We're in, we're with Agatha. But you can make a really strong case that William Billy Teen is, all, is actually the protagonist of the show. And I know some of you who know me, who know where I am, know what my background is, would go, Anna, you're a romance author. Aren't there always two protagonists in a story? No, as Bob Mayer would say, there is one protagonist. That's the person who's pulling the train. The protagonist pulls the train of the story. It is their journey that you are most invested in. But for Agatha all along, it could very well be that Billy is the protagonist. Because at times it feels as, as if Agatha herself is taking a back seat in a lot of these episodes. And we've seen the least amount of character growth from her seven episodes in. Now, it is called Agatha all along. So at the end, could they throw, pull something out of their hat to tie it all together? Yes. And if they do, and they do it well, <laughs> But another reason why I think maybe Billy may be the protagonist, as some of you have pointed out, the witch's road. Are we really on the witch's road? Or are we in a hex developed by Billy? Billy William, Billy William. Cause here's the thing. Cause a lot of the things we are seeing are things we saw from William when Billy first arrived in William's world. You know, the love of movies with all the movie posters and the types of movie posters he had, which was the fantasy and the magical and the mystical. But then we saw the teenage William when he brought boyf, boyf in you know, the leave motif, much like The Witch's Road. You know, he loved playing albums, long playing albums, not CDs. He could have had The Witch's Road on an I, you know, digital. No, he had the album. And he is the one that said, I want to go on this journey. Take me on this journey. What do we need to do to be on this journey? Not knowing he would need a coven, he wanted to go on the journey. So is that why so much of the road fits his aesthetic or are we in a spell of his making so one of the other things i found interesting and it wasn't until i didn't put together until i saw i think it might have been new rock stars talking about white vision and the series with white vision is supposed to be the end of a essentially the trilogy of the wanda the wanda trilogy i guess you can call it and whenever I think about white vision, I think about vision and I think about, you know, grief and WandaVision was very obviously upfront. This is a series about dealing with grief vision. You know, what is grief, but love personified? Was that what it was? No, persevering. What is grief, but love persevering? And then with Agatha all along, it too is a story about grief. Every single character lost something, whether it was a coven or their powers mother Agatha and her son Sharon Mrs. Davis lost her husband and even you know we had Billy who essentially lost Tommy but William's parents I still cannot get over the fact William's parents their son died and they don't know it so here we have this series about grief that fits in with WandaVision but at the same time told from a completely different angle and point of view which is fabulous <laughs> It's so subtle. My my favorite storytelling in movies are things, just even art, art even. The more subtle it is, but also in your face, I love it. It's like one of my favorite, it sounds so dumb, like t-shirts is when I see somebody with like a shirt that says in like Gotham PD. Again, it's subtle. You have to know what it is to know what it is. Like even the shirt, even the shirt I'm wearing right now. I don't know if I can pull up some. No, this is, it's an apple, but it's Snow White. This is a Snow White Evil Queen shirt. But unless you knew what it was. So a question I know I post in the past. I've seen others post. Not yet confirmed. Did Agatha actually go on the witch's road? Is she? Is, supposedly she's the only survivor of the witch's road. How long? 
<laughs> How long has the witch... Okay, so yeah, I have so many questions about the witch's road. So many. Anywho, let me narrow it down a thousand. <laughs> okay, so did she... Is she the only survivor? Did she survive? Did she... One, did she even go on the witch's road? And two... How did she get out if she did? So before episode seven, I had talked about and mentioned how I think the key to completing the witch's road is as a coven. It needs to be together. It's witches, plural, road. You need a coven to open the door. You need the coven to help you through each task. So if Agatha did in fact go on the road with her coven and she is the only survivor, I don't think she was successful in whatever was she did or she wasn't successful in the road spoiler out. I believe in my opinion that the key to defeating the road is you need to do it together. And now that we're seven episodes into it, I'm seeing patterns and those patterns are convincing me that that's the right way to go. <laughs> And it's not even just Lilia saying this last episode that what was missing, you know, you go on the road to find what is missing. What was missing for her? Oh, I just had another thought. What was missing for her was her coven. But I think it goes beyond that. Every death we have had so far has been an act of self-sacrifice. Lilia's, it was obvious. Alice self-sacrificed. She didn't know she was sacrificing herself, but she put herself in that way to try to save Agatha. Now you may be saying, well, Jen didn't sacrifice during her trial. She did not sacrifice, but Sharon self-sacrificed. She was the first person to drink that wine. She grabbed that bottle, poured herself a glass and downed it like that. And they're like, oh wait, it might be poison. And she's like, we're supposed to drink it. We're gonna drink it. She drank the second glass. So I'm wondering if maybe the tasks, the trials that they're facing aren't about how much witchcraft they know is what they're willing to sacrifice for the good of their coven. And if that's the case, what I'm hoping is at the end, when you defeat whatever the last one is, everybody comes back to life. Now, as I've said before, you know, when you've, you're told, okay, you're gonna go on this whatever journey, it could be dangerous and then somebody dies and they die. There's a consequence. There's a consequence to the action. That's what raises the stakes. And if you have a consequence, that doesn't mean much at the end. But I love these characters so much that I want them to come back. But would it diminish what they sacrificed? I'm hoping that what comes out is that because everybody sacrificed, they all win. And maybe that's why Agatha was not successful on her initial journey. She wanted power. Whatever she wanted was for herself only and not for the good of the coven. And therefore she wasn't successful. Now, maybe she doesn't know this. Maybe there's a sigil on her we don't know about. But if selfless acts are done along the way, at the end, they will all be successful. Speaking of the end, speaking of the end, Rio said something last episode that kind of made me go, wait a second where Lilia sees her and goes oh my gosh mm. and Rio says in the end all roads lead to me but the song lyric isn't the song lyric glory at the end to glory at the end so at the end of the road there's glory at the end so which is it? Is it death or is it glory? Or is the death glory or the glory is death? Which one is it? And that's something else I'm finding fascinating is the reveal of Rio as death. Okay. <laughs> mm. Mm. Okay, fine. That part is not as exciting for me as everything else that was happening Every time, every episode. <laughs> okay, fine, she's death. <laughs> I'm finding the tie in of witchcraft and craft magic. Like, and if everything from the tarot cards to the potions and everything has been done really well, it has not been done with that sometimes, uh, what do I want to call it? Not disrespect, 
But there is maybe that's it. It's the opposite. The way they're presenting this in the show, there's a level of respect to it that I appreciate. And because of that, what I'm hoping, there was something I've seen all along and it gave me an idea and I just kept forgetting to mention it. But I'm going to mention it now because I wrote it down, which is the power of a name. Names have powers. That is why if somebody calls you by your first, middle, and last name or first, middle, middle name, wherever you're from, you immediately sit up straighter. You take notice something is happening because that person has essentially invoked your name. Agatha should, as a witch for being as long as she is, knows that. So her constantly calling people by the wrong name, I think is deliberate. I am hoping as we go along, that little tidbit pays off. And it's not just her being forgetful. I would hope a witch with her power and her experience, she, when she's calling you by your wrong name or somebody, she's calling somebody by wrong name, she's doing it on purpose. If it's just, eh, I'll be so disappointed, but I'm hoping this will come back. Something that will flush it out the end. Oh, because I would, I would love that so much. It'd be so delightful. But the craziest thing also, the craziest thing about this whole show is everything I've been talking about so far is only with story. The magic on top of all of that is the performance, the acting. The acting has been stellar. Every character I've enjoyed, every, every actor that's in it. I know some people have issues with Joe Locke. I don't know why I find him delightful, but every person is in it has delivered and then some. So it's made the whole story experience because what's on the written on the page is fabulous, but the aesthetics, the editing, putting it together, it's all creating just that perfect packaging dorminess that I just want, I just want to revel in so much and so that's why i'm so excited to see the end and see where we're ending up at the same time i'm gonna be terribly sad and disappointed so i guess i should say to summarize what am i what am i looking forward to in the finale jen's left agatha's left billy williams left oh my gosh his question when he asked if he was billy or was he william <gasps> brilliant and heartbreaking because as much as he said i am billy maxwell doesn't he's not still he's still not certain but right yes what do i want at the end to summarize i want the group to be solid arms locked insult what, what did lilia say voices raised in solidarity i want them to be a coven that's what i want do i need a big showdown with rio is rio going to be part of the coven Hmm, hard to say. I know some of you have pointed out that not all of the Salem Seven were impaled. <laughs> so there might be a showdown with one or two of them. Salem Seven really haven't... Yeah, you could take the Salem Seven out so far and not mess up the story in any capacity. Barely even... So I don't need a showdown with the remaining two. I just want them to be a coven. <laughs> That's it. That's all I want. That would make me so happy. But I also want to know is what have you all been thinking? So my theories and ideas, is that something that you have shared? Are you seeing something different? Do you want them together? Do you want them apart? Do you want Agatha to catch a clue? Do what, what? I am dying to know what people are thinking and feeling. Cause so far it's been so unexpectedly delightful. Is it because our expectations were low that by comparison, this feels so much greater or has this just been really good, interesting and dynamic storytelling? I am so excited to be this excited about something. <laughs> so there we go. That's just what's been rattling in my head for the last 12 hours. <laughs> so. So thank you so much for being with me for this little adventure. It has meant so much. If you haven't already, 
please hit subscribe so you know when the next video drops, plus all of the other shows that I am watching. You can also follow me on Patreon where you can see full episode watch along. I also have exclusives there such as Resident Alien and this latest season of Great British Bake Off I'm watching <laughs> on Patreon. But until then, until next time, this is your reminder that if you haven't already today, stand up. Wiggle your hips a little bit. Have you eaten something today? Go eat something substantial, have some protein, and then you're gonna come back and watch the next video in the queue. So thanks again, y'all, and until next time.